Welcome back to the channel. Today I have just got my brand new 3D printer and now I can 3D print some prototype parts for the Hellcat Magnum that I have been needing to print so I can make sure they're good before I have them made out of billet aluminum. So this printer is a newer version of the printer that I already had, but the printer that I already had stopped working because the extruder wouldn't extrude material into the machine anymore and you can't get parts for it. After they're so old, this company pretty much stops offering the parts to fix them. But the other good thing is it's an updated version. So this one prints faster. They're a lot more durable and hopefully I don't have the same issues that I have with the last one. I'll put a link in the description because the last one I 3D printed a bunch of parts on it and I ran some of the prints for days at a time, which I was surprised how well it worked because these are very inexpensive. So I think I paid like, I think around like 700 bucks or something around there for this. And it's just a really compact and it's a large format 3D printer compared to what you can get for, you know, 700 ish or a thousand bucks from other companies, especially like main brand companies. Like, um, I think, um, Kodak is making one, but it's a really small one. So this is like a 400 mil by 400 mil by 450 mil. 3D printer, which is really large for what it is. So let's get her unboxed, set her up, and start 3D printing some of the stuff that I have been waiting to get done to make sure it will test fit. Keep making these easier and easier to assemble. This motor is on the back, and the extruder face is this way. So you're just gonna use the four 45 millimeter bolts right there to screw it on with I think there's provided Allens right there, a whole set of them, and cutters for the zip ties. So all these zip ties, you see after you get it all bolted down and secured, you need to cut those off. That foam needs to come off right there. You need to make sure there's nothing still left in there with zip ties or any of this foam because if you start it up and that stuff's in there, you're, uh, you're most likely gonna have an issue. The best way to get this bolted onto the base is to do it upside down. So you can just set it there and bolt in the Allens. And then also it allows you enough room to cut all these zip ties off right here. And then get rid of all this foam that's in the way. Let's see right there. Now all the zip ties are out. You want to make sure this is nice and tight. If not, you can adjust it by tightening these down here. They give you a wrench for it. Connect the stepper motors. You just slide these things forward. Stepper motor on this side. Everything is pretty centralized, so you know where it needs to go. And then this limit switch. So the spool holder just goes on this side right here and it clips in and then this that holds the spool is threaded, kind of threaded, and you just lock it in right there. You can see those two holes right there and the one hole on the top, you just line them up and it goes right there. Now this glass pane that has this perforated stuff on the top goes up just like so and then you use all of these right here to clip it on what i do is i just put them in the front and the back two and then two in the center and that centers this and this works very well if it's the same kind as the one over there but most people are impatient if you let this cool down the print cool down it will self release itself no matter how big it is and i've never had an issue letting that just sit. Once the bed cools, it just pops it right off. You don't have to mess with it at all. So I've seen a lot of people trying to pry them off and then this surface is on glass and it'll like rip some of it off because it actually sticks to it really well. So the last thing is the supports that go from here and you can see that it's kind of wobbly down there. These two support bars right here just go from up here to down here on both sides to give it support. And you can see it right there. And it comes with the hardware and all the nuts. Cut the zip tie on this right there. 
and then these rods you would think they would be left hand and right hand so you can kind of put some tension on this after you bolt it down but they're the same thread so you just pretty much adjust it to the right height so it fits in the hole and then cinch down these it doesn't really make any sense this shorter one goes to the extruder right here longer one come up make sure it's all the way unraveled and then this goes to the print head and it says make sure you don't wrap it around this it's pretty hard to figure out from the instructions because they're so small to see anything but there's a zip tie that holds this cable to this bracket right here then you use the three wire ties all the way down and then you run it the loom through this hole everything is now hooked up what i'm going to do is turn this on and sounds exactly like the one over there yeah almost looks like the same screen just a different thing so what i'm going to do is go to tools i want to uh, maybe i'm in the wrong menu let's go back system mm, where is it at to level the bed prepare leveling there we go auto level Um, use a tool to touch and there we go now she's gonna Ooh. Uh oh okay I thought some stuff was in the way pretty much just the same as that one over there but I think it's a little bit better because it has the dual stepper motors it's just shocked me. Oh, I guess this one does too. Hmm. Well, hopefully it works better than this one. This one actually worked pretty good, but after a while, I mean, it didn't last probably as long as I would have expected it to, but it's still, I printed a lot of stuff on this 3D printer. So I'll probably end up fixing it or maybe using it for parts. I mean, I just have like a 3D printer graveyard, so Let's get this all leveled out. I just designed the first attempt at the bracket to support the shift cable. So this is the factory one, but since I'm using the Hellcat Charger Challenger shift bracket or shift cable, I needed a different bracket. So I'm gonna print this really quick. It's like almost three hours. Prototype bracket that I just finished three printing for the transmission cable is perfect. So. What I need to do now is send this off to send, cut, send, have them bend it. Then what I'm gonna do is the other one is made out of steel that I have on the charger currently. I'm gonna use that one and then I can just weld it directly to this bracket. I'll cut these ears off and we'll be ready to go. I, think I did think that they should have put on the new Cobra series from the Churon is, you can see this is tied up like that to the filament tube. I like how on the Churon, it has this nice piece right here. I think that was a lot cleaner of a look, never had any issues with it, but, and then it wasn't, you know, it was separated from this, which I think looks a lot nicer um, aesthetically, but um, either or, I don't think I'll have an issue with either one of these. I just think that looks a little bit better than just having it, you know, cable tied to the uh, the filament tube. So the three printer is all the way together. Just finished my first test print. I printed half of a fuel rail I designed and it looks really good. There are a few settings that I wanna fine tune, but I also am using an old roll or spool of ABS filament that's been sitting out for probably six months. So that might be why there's some, it kind of looks like some air pockets or maybe bubbling. I'm waiting on the filament that I ordered with the printer, but I wanted to get this done so I could test fit it. So one thing I want to say about the printer is the auto leveling worked really well. And I didn't notice it at the time. This print head has all the auto leveling built into it. So all you do is go into the menu. It isn't like the older 
any cubic printer where you had to add the attachment to it. It's all built in. So you just go into the setting. It does all the points by itself to level the bed. Very simple. It's uh, almost dummy proof. Then it has a light on the bottom. So if you wanna see what it's printing or if it's extruding correctly, you can turn the light on or you can leave it on. You can turn it off if you don't want it on. Another thing I like is how you can adjust. This has a screw on it. Unlike the older one where it just had like a clip and it was almost impossible to adjust that gear in there as it starts to wear out as filament, you know, the more and more filament goes through it, it wears it down. And I think these two are actually metal. The old one on those older printers that they sold was metal and plastic, which I think also wore it down a lot faster. So I really like how much quieter this printer is compared to the older version. That one worked very well for a long time, but it was pretty loud. This one is pretty quiet for the whole night it printed. You could barely hear it. It doesn't, you know, it's not like super noisy. Um, for some reason, those one, you know, that one over there and that little one right there, they just kind of, I don't know what it is, but they just are really no noisy. And this is all pretty much the same setup as that for the, the tracks. Uh, it looks like these are a little bit nicer, but for the most part, I'm gonna say for the price, I think this was like, I think they're like on sale right now for like 600 bucks. To get a large format three printer that's this large, I mean, that's a pretty large piece. I think that's like 13 or 14 inches long. Um, it's 400 by 400 by 450 tall. So you can print a lot of stuff on this three printer. Just make sure you have a big enough spool. But I'm gonna end the video here. Super happy to finally have a 3D printer again because I've been needing to 3D print a bunch of parts I have designed for the Hellcat station wagon, for the FD, the FC, a bunch of cars that I have. And it just sucked not having a 3D printer. And I probably should have ordered one sooner. I just get, you know, where I get like super busy and then I just don't end up buying stuff when I need it. So. That being said, I would recommend getting this. They're, you know, a really cheap option. It's a really decent printer for the price. That was a very good pre 3 printer for the price. The only issue is after, I think that was like a year old, maybe a year and a half, maybe two. After they're so old, any cubic stops making parts so you can fix them. So that's why that one's sitting there as like a dead 3 printer, but I might order the parts to fix it or maybe even make them. So it, all it needs is stuff for the extruder and the uh, the filament feeder. So I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comp below. As always, see you guys next time.